Hello, my name is Blake Baxter and I'm the Media Relations Coordinator and Sports Information Director at Eureka College. Today I'm joined by Jerry Rashid, the head coach of the Eureka College baseball team, and we're here to catch up a little bit on what he's been up to and how things are going for the program. Uh, Jerry, it's been a while since we've seen each other in person, so how are you doing and what have the past few months been like for you? Uh, I've been doing fine. Miss everyone at school. Uh, the past two months is it's kind of, I guess, kind of what retirement feels like. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd like to do it yet, but uh, it's been, you know, very different in, in a lot of respects. Uh, from not being able to go to church on Sundays, except through television, uh, to having a lot of time uh, on our hands, doing different hobbies that I normally wouldn't do, uh, getting much closer to our family, which has been very, very pleasant, and kind of simplifying life a little bit. You kind of touched on this a little bit already, but you're the biggest baseball guy I know, so I have to ask what you've been doing to occupy your time without baseball. Well, i uh, been mowing the grass a lot at home. I, I made some nice lines in our field, uh, on our yard. Uh, uh, you know, uh, baseball's a, a huge part of, of my life, and as well as our families, uh, as well as many people around us. So being without it has been kind of lonely. Uh, we uh, have spent a lot of time uh, doing some things that I normally would never, ever be able to do in the springtime. Uh, I've been home all day where I normally wouldn't get home till 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and I found that there's a, a lot of work to be done that I never have done in 43 years. So uh, from that standpoint, uh, it, it's been, uh, I guess, productive, but yet uh, uh, very sad that we haven't been on the ball field. Obviously, your season was suspended and then canceled early on this spring, and that's a really hard and unexpected situation to deal with. So can you tell me, uh, as a coach and as a mentor, what kind of things did you tell your players to help them get through that situation? Well, that's a, a really good question. It's, it's kind of a, a question that I've never really prepared an answer for uh, because I've never had to do it. Uh, you know, you, you do it once in a while with kids with injuries, we had that last year with a broken thumb, a senior who's been four years, Grant Mullen, and, and to deal with that is tough for the individual. But it was because of injury, and he knew there might be not be a chance to play again. Uh, for us this year, uh, to just have it stopped uh, was, you know, and, and the uncertainty whether it was going to start or not, I think was the biggest issue we had to deal with. You know, are we going to come back? Can we come back? Of course we're going to come back because nothing like this is going to stop a season. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it did stop a season. It stopped really every part of our community and our society at, at some point. Uh, so to answer your question, how do you prepare for it? There is no preparation for it, at least not that I found. Uh, we did get to play uh, 14 games. We got to play a home game. We got to see the new scoreboard work. Uh, we got to see seniors perform to the best of their four years. So there's been a lot of good in 14 games. Could you tell me a little bit about what you did see on the field and what you were able to take away from the games that you were able to play this season? Well, I saw a lot of, of competitive uh, athletes for us, uh, much uh, a continuance of what we've tried to build in the two years prior. Uh, on the field, I thought there were we were very young. We had a, a young group of players, and they got their feet wet pretty quickly going down to Mississippi for three days and then going to Tennessee, uh, uh, Kentucky, and southern part of Indiana for uh, six days. So uh, they, they got a taste that college baseball is a lot different than high school baseball. Um, so on the field, we saw some really, really neat things from our kids. We saw them, you know, really advance and develop in a short time. Uh, the disappointing part is we really felt that uh, these kids were going to develop into a really, really good baseball team. And uh, we had some great senior leadership. We had, you know, two of the three of the five seniors were having outstanding uh, starts to their season. Uh, so we, we saw some good things. We saw our pitching improve. Uh, we saw some weaknesses. We need to get better offensively. Uh, we need to continue to grow defensively. But overall, uh, I thought the, the season was going to go going five and nine. Uh, uh, and, we, you know, unfortunately, we lost six straight where we gave three games away in the, in the eighth and ninth inning. Uh, for a spring trip, 
that was very promising for our program. Uh, throughout the spring, we've been uh, spotlighting your seniors online and on social media, but they didn't get to have that traditional senior day this year. So do you want to talk a little bit about the senior class and what they accomplished in their careers at Eureka? Well, you know, I, I came in three years ago, so I came in when they were uh, uh, sophomores. And, uh, you know, some of them played a lot, some of them played a little. Uh, but I, I really think probably as, as a group of young men who uh, got to share three years in the program with us, I thought they are, are as much as setting a, a, a foundation for our program. Uh, we've got some really very competitive and tough kids. Uh, we've got some guys that are real gentlemen. All of them are. Uh, we've had some growing pains as we go through a new program. Uh, but I, I thought the senior uh, group of kids were, were about as good as an example of, of what you want out of a, a ball club as there was. Uh, you know, uh, it's not easy coming in into a new program and then sticking with it. And our guys stuck with it. And we saw by the time they were seniors, all of them improved immensely mm -hmm. as athletes. And all of them uh, continued to grow as young men. So uh, from, the, from the senior class, even though there's no closure, no senior day, uh, there's so far, uh, there's not been a, a, a night out celebration with me to have dinner and talk and, and do those things. But uh, hopefully it will come. But overall, uh, I think the seniors, uh, both individually and collectively, uh, were really, really beneficial to see in this program advance. When you took over the program and as the years have passed, what have been some of the signs that, of progress that you've been looking for and observing over the past few seasons? Well, I, I think some of the things that we see for progress is we're, we're getting more talented athletes. We're getting guys that are now uh, top players in their programs. That's the first thing. Uh, we're getting guys that we have now two or three guys at a position that are competing to play. There's no one that's playing because he has to play because there's nobody else. Now every position we have, you better come and fight every day because uh, the recruits that we're getting are guys that are good players. Uh, so that's the first thing that you find in our program that's really gotten better. Uh, the second thing is uh, everyone now is, is starting to buy into what we're trying to go through. Uh, we talk about co competing. We talk about uh, having an at attitude of, you know, we're going to win this game, not just get beat by four runs. We're now saying, okay, there isn't anyone that we can't compete with and win. Is there anything else that you haven't mentioned that makes you excited about the future of this program? Well, I just think, uh, you know, the amount of energy and the amount of enthusiasm uh, and the excitement that, that we've generated uh, in a short time is important. Our kids are very excited about being baseball players at Eureka College. Uh, the college itself has, has done a great deal for our program. They've supported us, uh, they care about us, and in return, I think our kids recognize that, and they put just a little bit more effort into it as well. Uh, in general, our facility that we've developed, we've probably put close to $100,000 into it. Uh, much of it has been through donations and through uh, volunteerism and then assistance from the college and, and to a facility that is now hosting uh, summer diamond sports tournaments, hosting an IHSA regional game, hosting games where we've had fans come in and say, wow, this place is nothing like it used to be. And to us, it's a, it's a great sign that uh, everything about the enthusiasm in our program is there. Uh, so you know, from that standpoint, we're pretty excited about the direction we're going, and we can't wait. And unfortunately, we have to wait a little bit longer, but we can't wait to, to see that thing uh, progress even further. That's fantastic. Is there anything you want to share about this recruiting class? Well, I think we've got, uh, again, we're, we're getting uh, top players from uh, programs. Uh, we seem to find a niche in some uh, – really, really top 1A, 2A programs that we're getting the number one kid from that program. Uh, I know we've done that in this recruiting class. We've got several kids from uh, smaller schools in the 100 mile radius of us that recognize the program on the upswing, recognize the opportunity to compete 
from a freshman year uh, and recognize that they get a chance to develop their skills over four years and develop a bond amongst team. Uh, the, the recruiting class right now, I think we're at uh, 10 or 11 right now. And uh, usually, Blake, to be honest with you, this time of year is most crucial for us because uh, the state tournament, and we're going to the tournament and we're finding guys that have not, uh, you know, gotten a lot of attention because maybe they don't throw fast enough yet. Maybe they're just uh, overlooked. Uh, and in the all-star games that we go to at the end of the year, uh, we found four players last year. Three of them were starters. Jerry, you've seen a lot of baseball in your life. So I wanted to ask you, what's one of the strangest things you've seen happen in a game? Ah, shoot. Uh, <laughs> There's all sorts of crazy stuff that's going on. Uh, you know, uh, we practice all, we practice every possible scenario. And it's like, you got to be kidding me, Coach. Why are we doing this? Uh, because at some point, something really weird is going to happen, and you're going to have a light bulb on your head. I, I've seen this, or we've done this. Whether it be, you know, a uh, uh, fake throw and holding on or uh, – a hidden ball trick, uh, if it's done legally, uh, which, you know, happened to us last year, wasn't legal. And we knew it wasn't legal, but unfortunately the umpires didn't. Uh, and so, uh, you know, weird things where, where guys catch a ball and ends up inside their shirt uh, has happened to us before. Uh, and he's running in and everyone's keeping running and it's the umpires finally figured it out and said, no, you're out. He's got the ball inside of his shirt, and it was a legal catch. Uh, so things like that, uh, over over 43 years, Blake, uh, there are so many strange things that have happened. Uh, like, you know, in high school, at one point, some kid took his helmet off before he crossed home plate. And, <laughs> you know, legally, you're not supposed to do that, and uh, he was called out. And, boy, that drew quite a, a, a rhubarb between the coaches and, and an umpire. But uh, things like that, I – I can remember uh, one time getting thrown out of a, a game that I'm not proud of, but I was told I was going to get thrown out of the game before the game even started because we didn't hire a certain umpire two years ago. And this was way back in the 1990s. But I thought, well, that's about as strange as it got. Do you have anything else that you'd like to talk about or anything that you want to say to the Red Devil fans watching out there? Well, just continue supporting us. Uh, you, you know, the Red Devil fans are, are a very loyal group for all the athletics. Uh, and baseball is a tough sport uh, to follow in college or high school or central Illinois or the Midwest. Because honestly, and, and I'm being very honest, I'm always honest with our players, I'm always honest with our recruits, it's not fun to watch a game sometimes. Uh, it's not meant to be in a parka uh, bundled up uh, with – you know, 30 mile an hour winds and wind chill at 20 degrees and sitting there watching a baseball game. Uh, but I do say this about our fans, uh, both locally in town and our student body and our parents, the most remarkable people in the world. Uh, when there's a nice day out, there's 200 plus people at a game. Uh, when we played Knox this year for our home opener, uh, and it was a beautiful day, we had 200, 250 plus people. Uh, so Yes, uh, you know, to the fans, you know, keep coming. And I don't blame you when you don't come when it's 30 degrees. But when it's 50 and sunny, they're there, and we sure, certainly appreciate it. All right, Jerry. Well, thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time as always, and I'll see you soon. Okay, Blake. Good job. Thank you.